Hmm. Okay. Now there is this. Oh wait, 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 wait. Oh yeah, there. It's up. It's running. Another squirrel live strum. Squirrel live stream. Why? Because I am super bored. All right. So now the uh, the course for the Shakespeare that I mentioned before that was in two English courses is finally up. And let me just show everybody what I got. I already went to my. Ugh. Give it a second to download, and let me just take a second, Jack, and see if anything else is up. All right, let's see if my live stream is up. Is my live stream up? I don't know. All right, here we go. Uh, recovery. <laughs> There we go. Alright, are we good? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're up. We're up. We're up and up. We're up and... So I got the syllabus for... Next... Uh, the... Not English 349. English 336. Um... English 336 is Shakespeare and 349 is poetry. So the, the course I was doing was 349. This is 336. Which I'm definitely registered for. So I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Let me just check on everyone. See how you're all doing. Yes? No? You're like, no. Nah. No. Okay. Uh, so now, a couple things I want to do. Let's go over the course materials, because, uh... Actually, let me look at the schedule for 336. Um, there was a, p a page that, that I looked over, like 100, UFT, 100 global courses. It should show a uh, timetable. Level courses. There should be like something. There was a page that I saw. I show it. if you're at this level, it's like a basic level. The point is, there's like, um, courses and numbers. If it's like 100, it's a generalist course. It starts with like a theory of everything, like the history of literature from a certain time. And then it, then it starts to narrow to certain subjects like Shakespeare poetry or prose or any other type, any other um, field of literature. Because uh, when we deal with English, we're we're dealing with a broad range or any type of field. We start from the whole thing, and then we get to the 200 level, which is like uh, more focus. Goes into specific things like short stories, novels. Some of them have like prose and poetry, and maybe a little bit of drama on the side. And then when we get to the 300 level. It goes even more focused. Which specific period? Which author? And so forth. And then when it gets to the 400, it funnels down even more. Which is probably what I'm going to take uh, next year. Advanced Studies Group. Oh, dear God, that's going to take a while for me to get into. Hi! Alright. Right now, I'm in a 300 level. I'm not quite funneled, but I'm in the courses. Uh, Three... 36 topics in Shakespeare. I already have Monday or no, Wednesday from 6 to 9. There's actually two uh, lectures. I could have taken the Monday from 10 and then the Wednesday from 10 to noon, but I wait. Was there actually a Wednesday from 10 to noon? I gotta double check. <sighs> because that would be freaking messed up. <laughs> Is there a Wednesday from 10 to noon? Because I would like to double check. So, then let me make sure that I'm in the right course. I know I'm in the Wednesday one. Do I actually have the Wednesday? I don't remember. Okay, here's a Shakespeare one. Can I double check? No, you can't. There's no other lecture. 
I don't know why there's no lecture. I don't, it says so on the, the course website, but maybe it's just outdated. I don't know. So I'm in the I'm in the Shakespeare one, and I'm in the poetry one. So contemporary poetry is like a modern aspect. By modern, it's like 20th century before the 2000 era. So let's go to Shakespeare, shall we? Yes. All right. Uh, la, 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 la. Because they're both 300 level courses, which are really advanced, and they take a lot of effort to complete. All right. Uh. Just like 349, this also has a schedule in the back. There's only a few plays in Shakespeare I'm studying. Uh, Lucrece, Titan Titus Andronicus, Julius Caesar, Anthony and Cleopatra, Coriolanus, and Cymbeline. So, with Shakespeare, I've already taken 220. If there's anything I know, there's a huge list of vocabularies or analytical vocabulary that's associated, but now we're, we're funneled even more because we're in a 300 level subject. And uh, where 200 is the focus on Shakespeare, this is Shakespeare in Rome. And I've already taken some notes in regards to today's lecture, so I'll go I'll scan my notes in a second. As soon as I can clear this huge freaking mess, Move it all out of the way. Yes. I gotta do something about this. Okay, uh... I think tomorrow, I might read up Lucrece. And tomorrow I'm gonna go pick up a BBC Lucrece. Licorice. I'm gonna pick up the licorice. Lucrece, yeah. What is Lucrece? The Rape of Lucrece. Lucrecia! Uh... Is that the, the name from, um... The Rape of Lucrecia. Legendary Lucrecia, an narrative poem. Venus and Adonis. Shakespeare had included a dedicated letter to the It's a narrative poem. So... Ancient Rome. Roman women played the vital role in the transition of the Roman government from the Roman Kingdom to the Roman Republic. While well, there's no contemporary sources. So this is what the play is about. It's a woman who somehow... Well, the thing with Rome is that it was a monarch. And then it somehow became a republic. So a kingdom usually deals with a form of monarchy. By monarchical form of government of the city of Rome... Usually, monarchs deal with kings. So, uh, but then a republic deals with society. They overthrow their own kingdom, usually they end up at two councils. So the whole idea of a republic is that it, it has, like, a one of the basic forms of democracy. Or, sort of. It was by the mass. No, re... Republic. What is a republic? It is a form of government which the country is considered of a public manner, not a private concern or property of the rulers. Uh, positions of power within a republic are not inherited, but are attained through elections express the consent of the governed. Such leadership positions are therefore expected to be fairly represented in the citizen body. It is a form of government under which the head state is not a monarch. Uh, in American English... Republic can also refer to the spe specialty to a government in which elected individuals represented a citizen body. Known elsewhere as a representative democracy. Hmm. So it is in some way a democracy, but more for, like, the uh, popular vote. Uh. Not expressing a form of government. Most often a republic is a single sovereign state, but there are sub sovereign states. Blah, 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 blah. Originates from Cicero, translated in Renaissance as Republic in terms of various Western European languages. The term politia can be translated from any form of government poly, polity or regime. So the whole point is we're talking we're talking about Shakespeare, but in this Shakespeare we're talking about Rome, and it, and in this Rome the transition of Rome before Christ came. Why? Because um, the idea of power comes from the divine aspects. 
in Christianity. Power from above. So now, we're dealing with a sort of uh, a type of series of plays that were brought on by Shakespeare, which, which sort of brings knowledge. Because power or any form of knowledge came from above, and the idea of bringing up history as a form of knowledge was in some way that stated power came from below. Which is what the Republic is. Power from below. Is Trunky Tramp a Republican? I don't know. Is he from the lowest of the low? Probably. Already your divine right. Uh, commonly means a system of government which derives from the people rather than from another basis such as heredity or divine right. Hmm. Well, I think the people got what they wanted. Yes. Hi, Josh. Am gaming and try not to channel. Okay, so that's the basis for Shakespeare. Now let's get to Lucrezia, because that's Rome. It it went from the monarch to the republic, and then it went through several changes. And somehow this woman was responsible for that change. The uh, anti-monarchist rebellion, because it brought about history or some form of knowledge that somehow was a loophole around Christianity. Before Christ, which is A.D., it was more in B.C. But we can still talk about this. Before Christ came. Uh, let's see, what about Lucretia? Greek, Roman, Dionysus. The incident kindled the flames of dissatisfaction over the tyrannical methods of the last king of Rome, Lucius Tarquinius Superstitus. As a result, the prominent families instituted a republic over the extensive royal family of Tarquin from Rome and successfully democratic... And the public, because tyranny of the majority somehow prevailed. Alright. So what does the play have to do with Shakespeare? And what does it have to do with uh, a narrative poem? Wait. Lucretia is actually a poem? Wait, is it? Let me, let me see if I got this right. Lucrece! Licorice! Yes. Licorice. Okay. Okay, the rape of Lucretia. Is that what it's called? I don't know. On the syllabus it says Lucrece. But this is uh, called the rape. Hold on a second. I know, um, I have the textbook. The Oxford edition. Give me a second. Yeah. Right. It's right here. Yeah. Got it. Uh, the Oxford edition of the completed works on Shakespeare. Let's see if we can find the Chris. Because this is one of the original texts I was going to use for. Well, it was on sale. Is it called The Rape of the Chris? Tragedy of Antony. I don't see Lucrece. O H I T F. Where the hell is she? The tragedy, the true. Tragedy Titus Andronicus. I mean, taming the shrew. Romeo and Juliet, the second part of Henry the Fourth. Rape of Lucrece. Yeah, it is actually called the Rape of Lucrece. I just had some doubts as to the title. So it's a narrative poem, not a play. Is it a play? Uh, both the legendary previous narrative poem. Shakespeare in it included a dedicated letter to, to his pardon, the Earl of Southampton, which promised to compose a graver labor. Accordingly, the rape has a serious tone throughout because it often goes about shifting between tragedy and history. Ugh. Yes! Stop! And he's like, bye! And then you're like, lol, okay! Okay. Yes? No? Sorry if I don't get back to you as soon as possible. I gotta get, like, um, a thing that alerts me to whoever is here. Can I get a thing? Enable live chat automatically, box spam, automatically. Community settings. 
Can we chat post every 60 seconds? Nah. Uh, community. Is there a way I can get an alert for whoever says something? Hidden, default, uh, da, 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 comments. Allow all comments, creators, credits. Hold potentially. Da, 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 da. Nah, I'll leave it alone. There's nothing I can do to here. Okay, so it is actually called the Rape of the Cress. Uh, which sounds really messed up. Which is the Christian and other works. This is the play that we are going to look at. Because it's actually a poem and not a play. So, wait. The poem contains 1,855 lines divided into 265 stanzas of 7 lines each. The rhythm of each is iambic pentameter. The rhyme scheme for the stanza is A, B, A. A B A B C C, a format known as the Rhyme Royale, which has been used by Jeffrey Chaucer, John Milton, John Macefield. Chaucer, I know. Milton, I want to know. Macefield, I have no idea. I actually have the Canterbury Tales and all of his poems, like right here. And Twilight and Crusade. <laughs> but we're not here to talk about Chaucer. We're here to talk about Shakespeare. Because if there's one thing I know, Chaucer came way before Shakespeare. But I don't think he knew anything about Rome. Uh... So wait, is there, um... Thing? Is there thing? Hi! Stop! Bye! Well, okay. Okay! Bye! Now we're gonna watch a play, if I can find it. Licorice! Where's my licorice? Renos. French friend, Contraman, Julius Caesar's Act 1, Exerc, Antony and Cleopatra, Corolonius, Cymbeline, where the hell is... Well, you say, where the hell is licorice? Oh, crap. You know what? Screw it. I'll just look it up on YouTube and find it. <laughs> it is time to see what licorice is up to. Yes? Lucrece Shakespeare. Is there uh, da, 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 Luc Lucrece? Your daughter, there are a couple of plays for BBC. Is there actually a BBC edition? To kill myself. Da, 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 da. Bard. Which one? That's it? Music, blah, 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 blah. Gotta be a uh, thing, because I heard that there was going to be a lot of things related. Or no, I heard there was going to be a link on here, but I don't see a link. Oh, in another USA, Titus Andronicus. I'm looking for the Krish, not a Titus. Hmm. Just an example. Where's the licorice? I can't find the licorice. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a poem. Rape of the Chris poem. All right, you know what? Let's look it up. Maybe it's right here. Here we go. Is this it? To the right honorable Henry Rinsley, Earl of Southampton. Love it, your lordship is without end, where up to this pamphlet without beginning is superfluous moiety. More do I have? Uh, there's an excessive prize surnamed Superbus. Let me see if they all line up. Lucrace. Wait. Let me double check. Uh. Well, it's definitely the rhyming scheme. It's definitely a poem. So there's a thousand lines of poetry that I have to sort through. I'm not going to look at it like uh, the other poems I did uh, for uh, for Larkin. Because I did Philip Larkin the other day. Yes. <laughs> but now I'm going to do a different set of Paratra. Oh, sorry. Just... just uh, just a question, because if you were, I have a Discord channel for theories. No worries. I've dealt with 
furries. Oh, hey. That rhymes. <laughs> no worries, I've dealt with furries. In the form of flurries. <laughs> Alright. Racism? Wow. School live stream up. Okay, uh, you were saying? Alright. Okay, let me just make sure that everything is up to date. Uh, writing sheet is A, B, A, B, B, C, C. There's seven lines. Before the rhyme royale be used. Better. Okay, so this is definitely felt. A, B, A, B. Fire, fire, waste, ch chase stuff. Alright, it's time to read the longest poetry I've ever read since the Wits and Weddings. <laughs> Let's see if we can get through this in a thousand lines. Ah, oh, this should be fun. Uh, the first lamentable plight hastily dispatches messengers one to Rome with the father and another to camp and only the king. Alright, let's begin. From the besieged Ardea all in post, borne by the trustless wings of false desire. Lust breath Turquin loves the Roman host, and the Colatium bears a lightless fire, in which pale embers hid lurks to aspire, and the girdle with embracing flames the waste of Calatine's fair love, Lacris the chaste. Chase it. Definition. Abstaining from an extramarital, all forms of sex. So, in other words, the Lucretius the Virginess. But not for long! Because she gets raped in the end. Dun 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 dun! Happily, the name of Chaste, unhappily, I set this baitest edge on his keen appetite when Colatine unwisely did not let to praise the clear unmatched red and white which triumph in the sky of his delight were mortal stars as bright as heaven's beauties with pure aspects to find him peculiar duties for the for the for he the night before in Tarquin's tent unlocked the treasure of his happy state what priceless wealth of heavens had him lent in the possession of of his beauteous mate, reckoning his fortune at such high proud rate, the kings might be espoused to more fame, but king nor peer to such a peerless dame. Oh, happiness enjoyed but a few, and if possessed as soon decayed and done, as in the morning silver melting dew, against the golden splendor of the sun, an expired date cancelled ere well begun. Honor and beauty in the owner's arms are weakly fortress from a world of harms. Beauty itself does its do, the <laughs> doth of itself persuade the eyes of men without an order. What needeth then apologies be made to set forth that which is so singular, or why is Colantine the publisher of that rich jewel he should keep unknown from the thievish years because it is his own? Her chance his boast of Lucretius's sovereignty suggested that this proud issue of a king. For by our ears our hearts oft tainted be, perchance that envy of so rich a thing. Braving compared to saying only did... Hold on a second. I'm going for a marathon, ladies and gentlemen. What do you all think about this? Uh, uh oh. Oh shit, I... Mm, sting. His high-pitched thoughts that meaner men should... Should vaunt! That golden hap which their superiors want, but some untimely thought did instigate. His all too timeless speed, if none of those. His honor, his affairs, his friends, his state. Neglected all, with swift intent he goes. To quench the coal which in his liver glows. O oh, rash false heat, wrapped in repugnant coal. Thy hasty spring still blasts and never grows old. <coughs> I don't know what that was, but I'm well, moving on. When all the Caladium, this false lord arrived. Well, he was... Ugh. Uh, my mouth gets dry. I know that that's not part of the poem, that's just me. Uh, a Roman dame with all those face beauty and virtues strived. Which of them both should underprop her fame? 
When virtue bragged, beauty would blush for shame. When beauty boasted blushes in despite, virtue would stain that over with silver white. But beauty in that white entitled from Venus doth dove, dove challenge that fair field. Then virtue claims from beauty's be beauty, beauty's red. What? Why is there two beauties? Which virtue gave the golden age to gild their silver cheeks and called it their shield? Teaching them thus to muse it in the fight when shame to sail the red should fence the white. What the hell did I just read here? <laughs> uh, this heraldry in Lucrece's fame what face was seen, argued by beauty's red and virtue's white of either color was the other queen, proving from the world minority their right. Huh. Are we... Are we arranging people in red and white now? <laughs> okay. Uh. Uh. Yet their ambition makes them still to fight the sovereignty of either being so great that off they entertain each other's sight. Their silent war of lilies and roses, which Tarquin viewed in their face. Fair faces field in their pure ranks of his traitor eye encloses. Where lest between both him should be killed, the coward captive vanquished doth yield. To those two armies that would let him go, rather than triumph in so false a foe. Ah. Now thinks he that her husband shall husband's shallow tongue, the niggard. Oh dear god, we are playing with race, aren't we? Prodigal that praised her so, and that high task hath done her so. No, no, right? Beauty wrong, which far exceeds his barren skill to show. Therefore, that praise which Conteen doth owe. Enchanted Tarquin answers with surmise, and silent, wonderful of still gazing eyes. You're all listening to me, aren't you? Uh, this earthly saint, adored by this devil, little suspecteth the false worshipper. For unstained thoughts do seldom dream on evil. Birds never lie, no secrets. Bushed fear. So guiltless she securely gives good cheer and reverend welcome to her princely guest, whose inward ill no outward harm expressed, for that he colored with his high estate, building beat sin in its plates of majesty, that nothing in him seemed or inordinate, save something too wonder too much wonder of his eyes, which having all, all could not satisfy. But poorly rich, how the hell can you be poorly rich? I have no idea how that's even possible. <sighs> so one and in this story, that cloyed with much, he pinneth still for more. But she, that never coped with strangers' eyes, could pick no meaning from their parling looks, nor read the subtle shining secrecies writ in the glassy margins of such books. She touched no unknown baits, nor feared no hooks, nor could she more the yeah. lies his wanton sight, more than his eyes were open to the light. He stories to her ears her hus well, uh, husband's fame, one in the fields of true Italy, and decks with praises of Colentine's high name. Made glorious by his manly chivalry. With bruised arms and the wreaths of victory. Her joy with heaved up hands she doth express. And wordless so greets heaven for his success. Yes. No. Far from the purpose of his coming hither. He makes excuses for his being there. No cloudy show of stormy blustering weather. Doth yet in his fair welkin once appear. A pair? I think they... I don't know if they rhyme. Still sable night, mother of dread and fear, upon the world did darkness do <coughs> display. In her vaulty prison stows the day. For then, why, wait, why is day capitalized? I have so many questions. We are only one tenth away. For then is Tarkin brought to his bed, unintended weariness, with heavy upright. For after supper, long he questioned, with modest Lucrece, and wore out the night. Now let in slumber with life's strength doth fight, and every one to 
rest of themselves betake, save thieves and cares and trouble minds that wake. As one of which doth Tarkin lie resolving, the sun-dry dangers of his will obtaining. Yet ever to obtain his will resolving, the weak-built hopes persuade him to abstaining. Despair to gain both doth trap the... Traffic off for gain, and then... When great treasure is need proposed, though death be adjunct, there's no death supposed. Those that much covet are with gain so fond, for what they have not, that which they possess, they scatter and unloose it from their bond. And so, by hoping more, they have but less, or gaining more, the profit of excess is but to surfeit and such grief sustain. That they prove bankrupt in this poor rich gain. The aim of all is but to nurse the life with honor, wealth, and ease in the waning age. And in the same there is such a thwarting strife. That one for all and all for one we gauge. As life for honor is in battles, fell battles rage. Honor for wealth and oft that wealth doth cost. The death of us all and altogether lost. Hmm. My throat, it gets dry. So dry, I have to keep hawking the logie. So that in the venturing ill, we leave the things that we are here for, and which we expect of this ambiguous foul infirmity. And having much torments us all with defect. Of that we have, so that we do neglect. The thing we have, and all, and all for want of wit. Make something nothing by augment the. Make something nothing by augmenting it. This is. Such hazard now must doting Tarkin make, pawning this honor to obtain his lust, and for himself himself he be must forsake. Then where is the truth? If there is, if there be no self trust, then shall he think to find a larger just which he himself confounds, betrays the slander tongues in wretched hateful days. Now stole upon the time of the dead of night when heavy sleep had closed up mortal eyes. No comfortable star did lend his light, no noise but owls and wolves, death, biting cries. Now serves the season that they may surprise the silly lambs, pure thoughts are dead and still, wild lust, murder. Mm. It's taking too long. How many stanzas are there? There's seven stanzas, and there's a thousand. Oh, the gish. 265 stanzas of seven lines each. Is there something visual? We can all... I'm thinking, there's gotta be a link to a video that would make this easier unless I watch this. Hmm. Yes. I don't I can find it in rule arts. Let's see if we can find it. I'll have to go pick it up tomorrow after work. Media Commons. It might be here. Because usually that's where all the BBCs. My books, journals, new Chris. Lucrecia! Audio, Lucrecia, Tools, I want audio. Oh my god! What about BBC? Lucrecia, this is taking too long. There's no BBC, there's no such thing as a BBC, Lucrecia. It's a poem, not a play! What do I expect? Hmm. Uh, I'm only, yeah, I'm having those lazy moments where I don't think about anything else and I try to find a, a quick fix. Usually I get through one small thing and then I have to deal with it all, but now this this is just mass upon mass. Longest poem I'll have to read. Is it really the longest poem? Longest poem 
in the world. Mahabharata. What? The hell? Mahabharata. It's the longest epic poem in the world. Oh my dear god. One of the two major Sanskrit epics of ancient India, the other being the Ramanya's epic narrative. Face of the. Oh god. Uh, 1.8 million words in total. This is the longest epic. <laughs> oh my god. If you get easily bored, <laughs> lol. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, my god, well, the longest poem. This is the longest poem, at least according to it, because it has shlokas or couplets, 22 verses, lines! Oh, oh my gosh. This is the longest poem. Longest poem in the world, and this doesn't even come close to that. Ha 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 ha! Ah! I still have to read it. How far is it? Uh, nurse the life, and it's all the way down here. And I'm all the way up here, and I'm still not done. Starting from the top. Uh. The death of it all together last. We got past the greed part, so that in venturing ill we leave to the things that <coughs> the things we are for that which we expect, and the ambitious foul infirmity. Having much torments us with the de de defect of that which we have, so then we do neglect the thing we all we have and all for want or wit make something nothing by such hazard now must go King Tarquin make, hunting his honor to obtain his lust and for himself himself. Now stole upon the time of the dead of night, when heavy sleep had closed up mortal eyes. Now a comfortable star did lend his light. No noise but owls, and wolf doth deafening cry. <laughs> Serve the season that they may surprise. The silly lambs, pure thoughts, are dead and still. While lust and murder make him stain to kill. And now his lustful lord leap from his bed, throwing his mantle rudely over his arm. Is madly tossed between desire and dread. Though one sweetly flatters the other, fear harm, but honest fear be, be uh, bewitched with lust foul charm, doth too oft make be taken to retire. Be away by brain sick rude desire. So what, did he turn into a zombie? Is that what happened? Why else would he be brain sick rude desire? This falchion. I know it's a sword type. On a flint he softly smite it, that from the cold stone sparks of the fire do fly. Whereat a waxen torch fire with delighteth, which must be load star to his lustful eye. And so to the flame thus speakly and wisely. As from the fire the cold flint I enforce this fire, so the Christmas I force to my desire. Here pale with fear he he doth premed premeditate. The dangers of his lost enterprise, and in his inward mind he doth debate what following sword sorrow may on, on his arise. Then, looking scornfully, he doth despise his naked armor of still slaughtered lust, and justly thus controls his thoughts unjust. Who the hell are we talking about? Some guy who's like, I gotta have you, Crossia! Fair torch, burn out thy light, and lend it not to darken her. Whose light exceedeth thine, and die on hallowed thoughts before you blot with your uncleanliness that which is divine. Offer pure incense to so pure a shrine. Let fair humanity abhor the deed that spots the stain and loves my snow white weed. Snow white weed. Okay. Yep. 
Holy shit, that's actually a thing. Why did that actually turn into a thing? <laughs> ah! Wow. Um. Okay, uh, uh, oh shame to knighthood and to shining arms, oh foul dishonor to my household great. Yes, <laughs> I've been thinking of the snow. <laughs> On page five, including all foul harms, a martyr offense to the soft fancy slave. Thus, the tr ah. true valor still a re re true respect should have, and my decoration is so vile, so base, that it will liven and grave on my face. Just thinking about it is more than enough. <laughs> hmm? You're about to say something? Nope. <laughs> Yes, I have to spit it after every stanza. <laughs> uh, yeah, though I die, the scandal will serve. And me and I soar in my golden coat. Such some dash the herald will contrive to cipher me how finally I did dot that my posterity shame me with the note. Shall curse my bones and hold it for no sin to wish it that I their father had not been. What when, if I gain the thing I seek, a dream, a breath, a froth of fleeting joy? Are we talking about beer? Who buys a minute's worth to whale a week, or sells eternity to get a toy? For one sweet grape will, will, the, will the vine destroy, for what fond beggar but to vouch the crown, would the scepter strike be broken down? If Caladinus dream of my intent, will he not wake in a desperate rage? Post hither this vile propose to prevent this siege that hath engirt his marriage, this blurty youth, this sorrow to the sage, this dying virtue, this surviving shame, whose crime will bear an ever during blame. Oh, what excuse can my invention make when thou shalt charge me with such a deed? So, <coughs> black a deed, will not my tongue be mute, my frail joints shake, mine eyes forgo their light, my false heart bleed, the guilt being great, the fear doth still exceed. And extreme fear can neither fight fight nor fly, but coward like with trembling terror die. Had Colotinus killed my son or sire, or lain in ambush to betray my life, or not my dear friend desire this the This these wait, where was I? <laughs> this sire might have excuse to work upon his wife. As a revenge or acquittal of such strife. But as he is my kinsman, my dear friend, the shame of fault finds no excuse nor end. Shameful as it is, I, if the fact be known, hateful it is, there is no hate in loving. I'll beg her love, but she is own. The worst is but denial and reproving. My will is strong, past reasons weak removing. Who fears a sentence or, or an old man saw. Yeah, my mouth is dry. I'm talking too much. <laughs> I think it's still a good idea. But I'm getting too licorice. To licorice! Lucretia! Yes. Oh, I drank too much water for your back.
Uh, I gotta come back to this. I gotta come back to the poem. Why do I have to come back to the poem? Because it's there and it needs to be read. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, greatest is the chicken, virtuous the hair fly, cleanliest is tired, and more important than I. So you're supposed to say, I, uh, the graceless holds the chicken. Captain on. Um, thus graceless holds he dispution, tween frozen conscience and hot brain will, and with good thoughts make dispension, urging the worser sense of vantage skill, which in moment doth profound and kill, all pure effects and doth so far proceed. Now, that what is vile shows like a virtuous deed. Oh, just like basic politics! What the hell is a royal rhyme? Rhyme royale. Rhyme stands in the form of introduced English poetry by Geoffrey Chaucer. <sighs> Wyatt, Emma Lazarus. Other languages. <laughs> Uh, uh, constructed either as a tercet and two couplets or a quatrain and tercet. Allows for variety, especially in the forms of these longer narrative poems. Along with what is it? Okay, th we're definitely reading a narrative poem. A form of poetry that tells a story, often making the voice of the narrator and character as well. The entire story is written in metered verse. Narrative poems do not follow rhythmic patterns. The poem that make the George Shores be complex. Normally dramatic with objectives, diverse characters, meter. So it has the... It, it's still poetry. We're still dealing with the poem. It's just a different type of poem that is more prose or drama related. Novel, inverse, in an example of the Ring of the Book. <laughs> In terms of narrative poetry and romance is a narrative poem that tells the story of Chivalry, Romance of the Rose, or Tennyson's Idol. I know Romance of the Rose was that Ch Chaucer. That was not Chaucer, that was someone else. That says Cordley Romance! Because we're talking about 16th century. No, this is not 16th century. This is 14th century. Let me double check. Maybe I was wrong. Yeah, 16th century. Oh, oh, oh. Messenger, Colatine, a soldier in the Roman army, Tarquin, Sextus, Tarquinus, who rapes Lucretius, Lucretius, uh, Lucretius' father, June, Junus Brutus, friend to Colatine and Lucretius, a messenger, Lucius Tarquinus, king of Rome, and Tarquin's father. Servus Tullius, father in law of Lucius Publius Valerius. Friend. Ugh. My throat hurts so much by reading this over and over and over. <laughs> mm. Reading a really, really Long shake, shake, skate, Shakespearean, spare, spare me for the Shakespearean, Shakespearean poem. Care to join in? <laughs> ah! Ah! Thus graceless holes he did. Yeah, mmm, quoth he, she took me kindly by the hand and gazed her tidings in my eager eyes, fearing some hard news from the warlike van where her beloved gluttonous lies. Oh, how her fear did make her color rise, first red ro red as roses at long, w at long, we lay at dawn or lawn, then white as lawn. White as lawn. What the hell is white as long? What? What 
Well, I guess Washington will and refuses to stop. What? The hell, Trumpy Tramp gets a little kid to volunteer to, to mow the White House's lawn? Is that what this is? White as lawn. When I search white as lawn, I get trapped. <laughs> <laughs> Few more minutes, and then I'll take a break. I don't know which stands I'm in. Okay, I don't know what the white is long means, but I'll figure that out later. Anybody say anything? No? Okay. <laughs> Poetry. Care to join? You're like, no. <laughs> no. Uh, and how her hand and my hand being blocked forced it to tremble with a royal fear, which struck her sad and then faster rocked until her husband, Wilfer, did she hear. Whereout she smiled with so sweet a cheer that had Narcissus seen her as she stood, self love had never drowned him in the flood. Why hunt I then for color or excuses? All orators are dumb when beauty pleadeth. Poor wrenches have remorse and poor abuses. Love thrives not in the heart that shadows dreadeth. Affection is my captain, and, and he leadeth. And when he gaudy banner is displayed, the coward fights and will not be dismayed. Then childish fear, avoid debating, die. Respect and reason wait on wrinkled age. My heart shall never countermand mine eye. Sad pause in deep regard be seen the sage. My thy part is youth and beat him from this stage. Beat these from the stage. Hmm. Desire my pilot is beauty my prize. Then who fears sinking where such treasure lies? <sighs> It takes a good reader to be a good writer. Ugh. Otherwise, how the hell do you, you know what to write if you don't know what to read? Otherwise, you gotta leave from example. What are you gonna write about if you never read a book in your whole entire life? Yes. Yeah, I know. You gotta start somewhere. I'd rather read a novel. What I am practically doing with this long poem. And you can be the judge and see if I'm doing it wrong. If there's any way of doing it right. You be the judge. You be the judge of what I'm getting wrong. Yes, I'm taking breaks in between. Because you can only handle so much poetry. Are you going to come up with I don't want to look at it. I'm going to do my own thing. Just do your thing. I'm going to separate myself from you. I'm going to find an excuse not to discuss it. Poetry is more or less raw emotion. I suffer my depressive episode. So, no, yep, there it is. It's more or less raw emotion. That is the worst excuse I have ever heard. <laughs> uh. You have no sense for plot of trees. More or less raw motion. You know, I suffer my depressive episodes. Do not feel much. No point, lol. Also, I am live streaming you at the moment. Also, I am live streaming. <laughs> 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 
Anyways, where was I? Mm, childish. No, 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 no. As corn will grow my weeds, so heedful fear is almost choked by unresisted lust. Always, away he steals with open listening ear, full of foul hope and full of fond mistrust, both which as servitors to the unjust. So cross him with their opposition persuade, opposite persuasion, that now he vows a league and now invasion. With his thought, her heaven image fits, and in the self-same seat sits Colantine. That I which doth look on her confound his wits, that I which him beholds as more divine unto a few so false that will not incline. <sighs> what do you say to that? You're gonna say to that. I don't care. Tell him all to shut up. The uh, many responses. I do not consent, so I'm taking my leave. Okay. I'll just link you to the live stream right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like you backed out. You don't want to deal with anything. You want to say it sucks. I don't want to deal with it. Okay. Uh, uh, very funny. <laughs> 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 Uh, and there it harkens up the ju survival powers. It sounds like whoever this this poem is talking about is super evil. He's got a heart so evil, not even Satan can match. <laughs> We're gonna harken up the survival powers of Lighter by the leaders. Jock on show stuffed up his lust as minutes filled up hours as their captain so, so their pride doth grow, paying more slavish tribute than they owe by reprobate desire thus madly led. The Roman lord Mark hath to Lucrece's bed. The locks between her chamber and his will, each one by him on force, retires his ward. But as they open, they all rates his ill, which derives him from the creeping thief. So t to some regard, the threshold crates the door to have him heard. Night wandering weasels shriek to see him there. They fright him, yet he still pursues his fear. Mm. How can there in fear rhyme? As each unwilling portal yields, yields him away through little tent vents of, and crannies of the place, the wind wars with each torch. You want to say something? You want to say hi? Yeah, you know what? I'll just. Uh, oh crap! You actually did pull out. Yeah, freaking pulled. You're like, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, you can't stand up to poetry, but you'll stand up to making threats about banning people. You can never stand to poetry. Uh, oh god. Uh, this was his face. Wait, as each unwilling portal yields away through little vents and crannies of the place, the wind wars with his torch to make him stay and blow the smoke of it into his face, extinguishing his conduct in this case. But his hot heart, which fond desire doth scorch, puffs forth another wind that fires a torch. And being lighted by the lady's spies, the crushes glove wherein her needle sticks. She takes it from the rushes where it lies, and gripping at the needle, his finger pricks. As who to say the glove to wanton tricks? It's not a nerd. It's return again in haste. You'll see our mistress sterner in our chase. But all these forbidding, poor forbiddings could not say him. He and the worst... Sense construes her, their denial. The door of the wind, the glove that did delay him. He takes for accidental things of, of trial. Or as those the bars which stop the hourly dial, those with lingering slay his course doth get. Till every minute pays the hour its debt. So, so, quoth he. These things attend the time. Li like little frost that sometimes sometime threat the spring to add more rejoicing to the prime. And give the sneak birds more cause to sing. Pain pays the income of each precious thing. Huge rocks, high winds, strong parts, shelves and stands. The merchant fears are rich at home he lands. How long is this gonna go on? I'm almost a quarter through. And you know what? I might as well stop right here.
going to stop at whatever... But the poor for bennings could not stay handy in the worst sense. Till every minute pays this hour of this day. That's where I'm going to stop. Okay, break time. And I'm going to... 